All right. We have Jamel here, and you operate out of um, New Jersey. In New York. Um, in New, New York. York. Correct. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being with us today uh, and for taking the time to do the podcast. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. So what made you start your business? Uh, well, one of the things, I actually own a entertainment company. So we were doing weddings, bar mitzvahs, DJs, bands, and lighting. I decided to uh, go into more of the photo booth thing because I was actually subbing things out. I had contractors, things like that. And it made sense to now start my own. So I started a different company and just started doing photo booths so that that's a separate entity. And it's been going well. So no complaints. Oh, that's awesome. And um, I know you do a lot of bar mitzvahs, right? Yes. That's, uh, I'm going to say 95% of our business is bar and bar mitzvahs. Wow, that's amazing. We like for us as a company, we I think have done maybe one. So I'm always so interested into like how people get into them because I know they happen all the time in our city as well. And so I'm always interested to find out like, you know, what what you, how you got into doing them. So what exactly like or not what exactly, but what do you think is the secret to your success then? Uh, the secret to that was one um, just contacts with people. One being in the entertainment side not just the photos, going in, doing the events, having a connection with people, it opened up to it just being easy to transition from um, the DJ portion into more of the photo booth portion. Um, and it's just a matter of networking, you know, going places, meeting people, this kind of ties into a lot of things I'm sure you'll probably end up asking. Um, but that's how I got into it. Hey, people needed this. There were mitzvahs. I do more mitzvahs, as we said, than weddings and things. To me, those are things that a lot of people don't look at sometimes. And though, I mean, it's, it's a huge industry. They're, they're done every weekend. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm here, I know that they happen all the time, but we just never, you know, I've, we work with a lot of planners and I just don't have any planners that really have people who are doing um, those events. And so I've always wondered like, how, how do you break into them? Cause yeah, they're, they're, there's a lot. And man, those are some parties. Like <laughs> any of the pictures I see, they go all out with entertainment and decor. It's almost like a, a whole wedding. <laughs> C correct. People laugh um, like like with that. I get people, hey, I don't want to have their mitzvah. They're like, I don't want it to be a wedding. I'm the opposite. I'm like, um, my mitzvahs are more than my weddings. Wow. So I find weddings, they generally spend more on food and mm -hmm. things like that in their location. The mitzvahs, they're really into the entertainment. You have to be able to entertain the kids and adults. So with our photo stations, knowing how to do something for both, interactive, things like that, like the salsa booth, is really cool because it's modern, it's new, but then the adults can come over and still get a more of a fun photo and still somewhat classic, but it goes to their phone now. You know, right. so it, it's that's the cool thing where kids are like, hey, my phone, the lights, and the adults are like, okay, I get a nice picture. <laughs> nice. So it, work, it works out well. And then some of them, yeah, if you get the cooler ones, they're like, hey, they want to do the craziness too. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what do you think is, what was your favorite marketing strategy uh, that you've maybe done to date? And, or maybe how did you, you know, get into all of this? Okay. Um, it's funny. I'm, I'm old school. Um, I do do a little things on, you know, you'll see Instagram and Facebook like everyone else. But that one-on-one -on -one connection is key to a lot of things we do. Meeting people, making that interaction with them. They, they trust you more. Like anybody can go on and go, hey, I spent $1,000 on Instagram and yeah, you're going to get some hits. But nine times out of 10, when I talk to a client, most likely they're ready to book or close to it because someone else has referred them. So it's coming from a source that they trust already. So in that case, that's the best route for me personally. I'm going to start doing more of the Instagrams, things like that a little bit more. But I find that networking and if you can get into a venue and you have connections with the major D's, things like that, and party plans, as you said, they're going to give you an avenue and open up doors that you can't open yourself because they're already dealing with that client and they're mm -hmm. trusted. Now, do you have a lot of relationships with venues and planners or do you generally mostly go off word of mouth? Um, a lot of it's word of mouth, um, but I do have a decent amount of planners that also push us um, for both sides of the fence. And that's the best part for me, because if I'm already going to be providing a service as the entertainment, when I say, hey, I have a photo station, photo booth, it's a no brainer. Why go with someone else when you can do everything with us? So it already opens. So if you're a photographer, hey, I have a photo booth. Boom, you're in, most likely, um, because mm -hmm. they already trust you, already spending with you. Yeah. No, I mean, we 
we operate the same way in terms of like planners. <laughs> we love them. It's just so much easier than trying to find a new client every single time, right? And yes. everyone yeah. we have on the show says that that's their number one way of getting businesses through referrals. So, you know, it's resonating through all of the interviews that we've done. Correct. Um, I, think it's, I think it's key. Yeah, absolutely. What's one thing that you wish you knew when you were first starting out? Um, I'm going to say everything takes time. We all want it instantly. We want gratification. Hey, the business is just going to zoom and go quickly. It doesn't work that way. Um, so know it takes time and know there's no such thing as failure. It's a dress rehearsal. Anything that you do, you're going to learn from. So if I make a mistake or something doesn't go the way I planned it, I look back at it. How can we make it better the next time? Generally, it's something that we know as the professional that somebody else doesn't notice. But for us, it's a big deal. For them, they may not notice it. So those are the things that I, I always go back and look. If it's a photo, hey, how can we correct it? If it's an overlay, maybe I'm not going to use that person because right now I'm not doing all my overlays. Maybe I'm not going to use that person or use somebody else because I like it better or have a better uh, conversation with them before, you know, utilizing it. So it's just learning. That's it. Take your time, learn. And I'm learning every day. I've learned a lot of stuff from listening to you, actually. I'm always <laughs> like, hey, what, what'd you say today? You know, type of deal. So I appreciate, you know, you keep giving us some more knowledge. Oh, I'm glad I could help. I mean, we, you got to learn by trial and error, right? That's definitely the best way of learning anything. Yeah. People, I always try to tell them, like, don't be scared to try out new things. Because that's literally when, when you're out of your comfort zone is really when you start to learn things. And, and as long as you're always improving, like, I love that. And anyone who I've ever talked to who's really successful says the same thing. You know, you make mistakes. And even though nobody else notices, you notice. And it's just always about bettering yourself, right? Correct. I'm, I'm so anal that we, when we do the DJ and other things, I will watch your entire video unedited to see everything that I could have done better or someone else. And even with the photo station, I'm like, okay, what could we have done? Maybe we should have did better on lighting, things like that. So trial and error. And as JG said, he succeeds because he's not scared to fall from the sky. So I'm like, hey. <laughs> That's a great yeah. line. <laughs> I, I stole it from Jay-Z. So, you know, got to quote it. Of course. <laughs> um, and if you knew someone who was maybe struggling a little bit or needed some advice, what do you think you would tell them at, at this point? Um, the biggest thing is, again, it takes time Two, if you're doing an event, every person at that event, I don't care if it's the wait staff, the gentleman who parks the car valet, every person there is an opportunity for business. You never know who's who. So don't just go, oh, he's a waiter or he's the janitor. You know what? He's got a kid. He's, he may be getting married. If you treat him the same way you're treating the major D and the client, chances are they're going to remember you. I've had a lot of people ask for cards that were working the event. Hey, my sister's having an event. We need a photo booth or we need this. You give them a card. You never know. So that would be my biggest thing. Treat every person like they're your next client. And then the, the last thing I would say with that is every event to me is my first and my last event. I'm only as good as the last event I did. So I remember when we first started, everything we did, double check this, is that take down right? And then generally what happens with a lot of people, they get comfortable and they start to cut corners. That's where you have the problem. So if you do everything, you check it, and I hear you say this a lot, check it again. Okay, it's working, <laughs> <laughs> you know? All right, and then you know. And then, you know, you're able to sleep at night because you've done as much as you could do mm -hmm. to prepare yourself for success. Yes. Yeah, you can never check stuff enough. I mean, <laughs> even with all of the checking that we do, like there's always going to be one of those events where, you know, you just didn't have that thing and then you're scrambling and ugh, it's, you know, I, I wonder how some of these people do it when they don't test the night before and then they go to an event and it doesn't work. I'm like, how do you sleep at night? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it happens to me more with tape for some reason, even though it's in the box. Somehow or another we'll do something and somebody will move the tape and I'm like, wait, wait. And, you know, and generally I keep gas tape, which I would suggest everybody purchase. It's been a little bit extra because it doesn't rip up the floor. That's another mm -hmm. thing I will tell you. Um, and I have black and white. And so if we're someplace and it's white and it can blend in, you don't see the tape. So it looks a little neater. Mm -hmm. um, but those are things that I would say. Yeah. <laughs> so you need to have gaff tape everywhere when you own a photo booth company. In your, yes. Well, if you're like me <laughs> in my purse. <laughs> <laughs> in I, I try car. to keep some in a car. Exactly. I try yeah. to keep some in the car. So I'm like, okay, just in case. You never know. It's handy for more than just photo booths too, right? Oh, believe me, I've used it plenty of times. So I was like, oh, I have no tip. Gaff tape. It'll work. Yeah. Um, so is there anything that you're seeing in the bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah like 
arena, I guess, that is like up and coming or like things that you've seen that are really cool that maybe people can focus on doing? Is anything in particular, I guess, that stands out? Um, the only thing, I, I say a lot of the roaming stuff people are really into now, the roaming photo booths, things like that. Um, and then just anything that's flashy because you're dealing with kids and adults. So generally the kids are drawn, like I was saying to before, if you're talking about salsa, the lights that are going, it, it draws into it. something about it. It's like a bug going to the flame. For some reason they go to it, even though they know, you know, um, so that draws them in. Um, and they like a lot of people, depending on the client, like the new state of the art. So something that's cool and a little edgy, doesn't have to be too edgy, um, I find works well. And they want quick. If you're doing an event, as we all know, nobody likes to generally see lines. So if you can do it and keep things moving quickly, it's I find it being one of the best things to do because you can turn around. And then you could also possibly sell two photo booths because if they want something um, a little bit more custom, that's going to take longer. But you can have a photo booth that's, hey, this is quick and ready to go. And if they want that, you can sell them. You know, I've sold two photo booths just because of that. Nice. If they wanted something really custom. That takes longer. But then they wanted something quick. Two booths. I'm not going to complain. No, definitely not. That's the best. <laughs> um, in terms of, uh, oh, I had a question for you that literally just slipped my mind. Oh, right. I talk too much. <laughs> no, no, not at all. My uh, my light turned off, so I was like, oh, I got to turn that back on. Um, let's talk about virtual booths. Have you been seeing any uptake on that? Because obviously that, I, I don't know about you guys, but as of maybe an hour ago here in Ottawa, they actually reduced our restrictions again on events. Um oh. So only for private residents, thankfully. So we can still have weddings at venues and whatnot. But you know, virtual booths for us have been really, really huge. I'm wondering if you're seeing any uptake in that in private events or in any of the events that you're doing. Um, as of now, I haven't just because I have just started messing around with it. So until I perfect how to do it, I've kind of stayed away because the last thing I want to do is put my name on something, put it out, mm. and it doesn't go right. So for me, as of now, we haven't. I'm no. pushing towards doing it because I really want to I want to learn more about it before I send it out. And then I got to tell other guys how to do it <laughs> to make yeah. sure just in case I can't do something that day, they can jump on for me. Mm -hmm. But have you been getting any requests for like do your clients even like ask for something that is will include virtual people or, you know, like because I know live streaming is huge for weddings here. They're always like, how can we include our guests? Yeah. As of now, I haven't gotten it that the only thing I've gotten is people wanted me to, as you said, live stream their mm -hmm ceremonies or in this case like for the mitzvahs i've got a lot of people who call for live stream but they have it and that's what i want to put together live stream where i'm showing the ceremony or you know and then hey look we can have a photo booth tied into it and wherever they are so that's i'm trying to put together a package now so i've been messing around with everything and putting the numbers together to figure out how to make it work so i haven't really jumped into it i'm hoping in the next week i'll be able to start sending that out and maybe pick up some stuff virtually Nice. Yeah. Well, it looks like you have a great yeah. revenue stream coming your way then if you're going to start I, offering virtual booths. <laughs> um, yeah. The only, thing, like, the only thing I say virtually, and that's more of like the green street styles, like with, again, salsa, the virtual, you know, props, things like that have been great. Um, because mm -hmm. if you don't, right now, we can't use props. So it's like, hey, you want glasses? It's already on there type of deal. Um, so that's been the only thing I would say that I've been doing more or less virtual. Nice. That's awesome. Well, any uh, any last words or anything you'd like to say before we uh, end the podcast for today? Um, I would just say keep trucking at it. Uh, keep working hard, everyone. Um, obviously, it's tough times, but sooner or later, this will be over. And no matter what happens, you always will learn. So keep learning. Learn every day. Make adjustments and network. Network, network, network. Find a planner who does mitzvahs, weddings, quinceaneras, birthday parties because that will keep you revenue coming in all the time. So that's my biggest thing. I think network, get out there. I don't go to the Chamber of Commerce personally um, because where I live, I don't work where I live. Um, financially, they just wouldn't take my price here. So I don't go to Chambers of Commerce, but you know, I, I go to Ilea, things like that. Find out what's out there in your, your area and utilize them as much as you can. Amazing. Well, that is a, some great words of advice right there. And thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. It was all my pleasure. I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too.